Hello and welcome to Tech. I am Muhammad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about what if parameter in Power BI. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, please click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now we have 65 plus videos content and 5 hours of video content. Let's get started. What if parameter is already from the beginning itself? So I have to make a video of it. For that we need to go to this modeling tab and then new parameter. What if parameter lets you see how your data behaves under different conditions? Add them to your reports as slicer or reference them in other tax expressions. It is just a beautiful function that we can use it for our different scenarios. How it will be based on the data changes. Say for example, we have this case that we have orders in hand for the factory A, B and C like 3400, 5500 and 4900 whereas the management has set a target of 5000 units per day. In that case, there is shortage of 1500 for A and there is excess of 500 in B and 100 shortage in C. So what will be the situation, what will be the outcome if we change the target from 5000 to 5500? I am just changing the slicer now. So if you look at this one, combined of 3 units A, B and C, there is shortage of 1200 quantities per day. If the target is 5000, now if we increase the target to 5500, there is a shortage of 2700 quantities per day. This can easily achieve only with the help of what if parameter. So, this is a cool function. Let's go step by step how we can achieve this. For that, we need to go modeling tab and then click on new parameter and give it a name the parameter and then the data type whole number decimal or fixed decimal if you want to increase it by decimal point like 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.5 you can use the decimal numbers if you directly go to the round of whole number you can use this one and then you need to define the minimum value what is the minimum value of the parameter and what is the maximum value and the increment if it is in percentage, you can increase by 1% or you can even increase it by 100, 200 if it is a number and what is the default value of it? Once you have created it, what is the default value of it? And you need to check one more point here, add a slicer to this page. Once you have created the what if parameter, it will automatically add a slicer on your page. Say for example this, once you click on OK on the dialog box, it will create a table with the two measures and a slicer. If you click on the new target, let's go to data type. Let's understand what it has. So in data type, I have selected this one target table and then I have two columns, new target. So it creates a DAX function, generates series, start value is 3000, end value is 7000 and increment is 100. So it automatically create a column, new target, only 100 increment begins from 3000 to 7000. In the next, it creates a measure and selected value, new target, new target, alternate is 0. It's just a slicer what we are going to select here. Once we had this one, we need to add one more DAX function. Let's have a look at this visual. Um, this is the factory and then old difference and then the new difference. The old difference is 1600 minus 5000 and 100. If you look at this ND uh, measure, you will see this one. There's a new target, this 5500 into number of factories. So for each factory, we have set a target, right? So what I will use is sum of new target into the count of factories minus the orders available in each factory. If you add this um, DAX calculation that measure in this visual, it gives you a nice outcome. So the, if we increase the target by 5500, the new uh, difference is for A it is 2100 is shorted, for B it is 
um, equal and for C it is 600 for it. If we increase the capacity by 6000, say for example, then we have a shortage of 4200 overall for A 2600, for B 500 and for C 1100. Let's have a look at another example. I have this sales page. In this, there are three units over there, A, B and C. And the management has set a target of 2 million sales per month. Whereas they have achieved 1.65 in A, 1.85 in B and 1.72 in C. So how much effort they need to put to get the target of 2 million? For that, I um, use this what is function. I'm increasing the percentage here in the slicer. So 5%. It's not going to achieve any of those. If I increase to 6, if I increase to 7, if I increase to 8. If I increase to 8%, so B factory can achieve the target. They have to increase the production, they have to increase the sales by 8%. Whereas for A and C, for C, they have to increase 16%. And for B, they have to inc increase by almost 21-22%. That's it, this is the cool thing, right? So, let's have a look at the table structures and how we can achieve this one. The same way, you have to go to modeling tab and then click on new parameter and then you need to set the parameter name, set the parameter name and then, then the data type, the decimal number and the minimum is 0 and the maximum is Say for example 50, the increment is 1 or 0 0.5, the default is 0. If you created this one, it will create a new table with these two columns. The first one it will create a generate series from 0 to 50 with increment of 1. And then the next column it will create a selected value of this slicer, what I selected. The default is 0, I mean the alternate is 0. So once we have this one, let's go to this visual and then the target sales. The first one is the unit, the target and then the sales. And then I have added a new measure on that, new sales. That what I have done is the sum of target sales, which is the actual one, plus the sum of target sales into the percentage of what the slicer value I have selected. It's a simple trick and does the work. It just add the value of the percentage to the actual sales. This is how you can able to do in some other situations like if you want to put a loan calculator, that it's compound interface. So how much percentage uh, you need to put and what are the monthly EMI on that. You can also do that. If I have time, maybe in future I can do that one. So I have these are the two cases, the one is order and one is the sales. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click on the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, please click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. As of now, we have 100 plus subscribers and 65 plus videos and 5 hours of content. So you can learn a lot about the Power BI in this channel. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Please share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, please post it on the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.